Hello and welcome to another episode of Your Power Echoes with Julie Sil Kalunji. I am your host and trainer and this is where we empower the entrepreneur in you to rise and shine to your awesome destiny and create that residual income because you've got residual bills to pay. So grab your favorite teapot or copper, sit back and chill out for a bit while I share and talk about what's on my mind, sneak in some awesome deals and talk about home-based business, internet marketing, social media marketing and all that good juice. Feel free to chat it up in the comment section below. Uh, share your insights, your interests, whatever it is that interests you, anything that excites you or you are bummed out about and not sure who I am head on to jewelscowpoly.com and get to know Julie Seal. And I love to bring you your travel mojo on so you can go see, do and be more in your life because life is too short uh, to not just be enjoyed. You are here on this planet in pursuit of happiness and nothing else really. Everything you do is in pursuit of your version of happy. And uh, in my world, in my world, travel is one of those things I was created to do. I mean, to go out there, dominate, rule, reign. And you can't rule, reign in one place, so I go travel. So today, I'm just going to bring you some of the tips you have to absolutely have in your luggage, whether handheld, carry-on, checked-in luggage when you are traveling to Africa. Now, I've been to different parts of Africa, especially East Africa, and I can tell you now that Africa is hot. It's a hot continent. It's dusty. It is beautiful. It's full of flora, fauna, uh, terrains, all kinds of things, and there are some things you absolutely must have in your luggage in order to make your trip, your vacation, your holiday, a total blast so without further ado i'm just gonna share this broadcast with a couple of places so we are together hey enoch how are you doing so i'm just gonna do this it'll take me literally two minutes so i hope you do not touch anything on your computer on your phone on your gadget while i share this broadcast with those essential places that i like to be sure that we are on the same page so that I broadcast from everywhere and hit all those buds with one stone and save time. Multitasking, no multitasking. I'm literally broadcasting in one space by hitting all those places. It's like having your telly in your home. Everybody does have their telly in their home. But, but the, the beauty is while everybody has their telly at home, it's all broadcast from one place. Welcome, Enoch. Welcome. You're very welcome. So now I am going to ask you to literally invite some friends, you know, people who like to travel, people who like to go away and, you know, R&R, people who like to uh, take safaris, people who like to improve their lives because life is in pursuit of that that makes you happy. And, you know, you know all those people. Hey, Eva, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Thank you. You're so very kind. Thank you. So. We are, we are literally two more shares and we are good to go. Literally two more shares and we are good to go. If you're in area code 256, I am very sorry, but I just really have to do this. I've got to do this because it is my way of making sure that everybody does not have to look for me. I find them where they are in the groups. And um, I also share on my other profile that way. Uh, Still is online as well. Ooh, where are we still? That's us. I'd like you to consider what you're packing. Uh, if you're new to this broadcast, introduce yourself so I can give you a warm welcome. If you are, hey, Christina, how are you doing? Where are you chiming in from? Let me know. If you're new, drop a one so I can welcome you. If you are uh, my favorite, farm follower and you always tune in again introduce yourself so i can give you a vote of gratitude uh, like i said i'm still kalunji i uh, live in the uk i've been living here for yonks I, I i consider myself a digital traveler i have years of travel been to over 54 countries and counting i intend to see at least 200 countries before I leave this planet. I intend to have a tequila on as many beaches as I can before I exit. And by God's grace, I hope I live to be old enough to tell a tale. When I'm old, I want to tell a fabulous tale. I want my story to be shared and for people to say she lived a good life. One of the things that I do is share about 
how to make your travels fun more fun more fulfilling more exciting more better planned you know where to eat what to do all that juice so let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's topic because i'm sure you guys are really really excited africa attracts millions of tourists every year i was born in africa but i live in the in the uk so i consider myself one of those tourists going to africa sometimes i'm going home sometimes i'm not so i am a tourist myself and uh it could be a trip of a lifetime or it could be a nightmare of giant proportions if you don't take the right bits and bobs in your baggage now whatever the reason for your things for your visit for your trip make sure to pack light you see a lot of us pack so much every single time i cannot tell you that every single time i park for africa i overpack <laughs> and every single time i leave half the stuff i've taken because a i haven't used it b i have not used it in europe either and it was just weight that was carried baggage so i come back a lot lighter so maybe i should just pack light so should you when packing for your trip be very selective about what about the items you pack because i kid you not you just might be uh, you, you might be overweight, you might have to pay for extra luggage and yet you get over there and you don't use half the things you took. Hey Janet, how are you doing? Hey Irene, welcome to this broadcast. So, your packing list to Africa should be different from your packing list to the, to the North Americas, to Europe, you know, to Asia. Asia, it shouldn't be that different from Asia actually because Asia is just as dusty, just as tearing full, just as hot as Africa. But there's a slight difference in the things you can take when you get, we're going to when you're going to Asia, and maybe I'll do one next time on that topic. Now, here are the essentials. Number one, uh, you don't have to be a man to carry a backpack. If you're a lady, have a good rucksack. If you're a man, have definitely a backpack. It should be sturdy. It should be strong. The kind of bag that can carry lots of bits and bobs for you and can be strapped onto your front, not your back, because I'll tell you why in the next tip why you shouldn't carry your bag on your back or on your side when you're in Africa. And I'll tell you, I'm not being mean, I'm just stating the facts because that is, it is what it is. Number one, rucksack. Most of East Africa is hot. Most of Africa is hot. You need to have at least a water bottle or buy one. You need to have some chap, chap, you know, leaf chap, you know, something to moisturize your lips. You need to have at least a comb, you know. You need to have a lot of things that you have to carry around with you. If you're a man, and you don't have a rucksack, you're going to have to carry a, a, a polythene bag, cavera or what, something. A rucksack is something you can strap on and carry with you, comfortable. It, your, your, your body takes its weight and it becomes part of you. Simple. Number two, travel pouches. Now, some of you know travel pouches, some of you don't. I'm going to have a full blog post with images of these things. And if you want to buy them, you can buy them from Amazon. You just go and Google them on Amazon. <laughs> well, Amazon them or Google them, whatever. A travel pouch here most downtown areas of most cities in Africa even here in Europe are crowded are dusty are full of people ready to relieve you of your essentials and treasures if you have a travel pouch especially if it has a strap on it you literally wear it around your neck inside your clothes inside of your clothes so that it is safely inside. You can put in your, your passports, your money, your, your medical information if you have a medical condition, your medicines if you need to carry some medicine around with you. It's, they are normally, they're normally very handy. You are wanting to keep your, your valuables away from those nifty hands because they are pickpockets in several places. Not just in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, you name it. In, imagine in Barcelona there are the niftiest pickpockets you've ever come across and this is europe so it doesn't matter where you are wherever you're going if you're going to be a tourist and do the touristy thing you need to have your travel pouch wear it up around your neck or around your shoulder inside of your tee or top or dress it won't be noticed and even if it's noticed who cares sometimes smartness takes a little bit of adjustment so your money, your valuables, your 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 TCs, your whatever, your bank cards, your tickets, your all those things can go in a travel pouch, and you absolutely must have them. Now, ladies, we normally have a handbag, but we carry our handbag on our sides. It's not normally the safest place to carry things because it can be, you got it, cut. 
pickpocket some people don't just pickpocket they cut your bag you could have bought your fendi bag it cost you like thousands of dollars and somebody cuts it to gr to grab at your wallet so definitely a travel pouch saves you the hassle sunglasses you got these yeah let's put them on you need these babies to protect your eyes from uv rays from the heat from dust from uh, uh you know and you don't want to be squinting you don't want to be doing this when reading things but when you're doing that behind your glasses no one's gonna see yay hey welcome back eileen hi toby how are you doing so you don't want to squint it's not cool smartness comes into mind you want to be classy you want to look the business you want to get a pair of stylish glasses my sister bought me a pair that is super cool i've got it on the blog and uh, i love them so have an appropriate pair with the right uv uh measurements to protect your eyes uh that eye area is also very prone to getting dark circles and things from too much sun i know vitamin d is great but your eyes need to be protected from all those things so take a pair with you sunglasses uh number four hand sanitizer hmm. if you now i don't know when i grew up we didn't have hand sanitizer seriously uh, this stuff is now a must to have we have these diseases and these germs that literally are very resistant to stuff. So you need your hand sanitizer. In Africa, in Asia, even in many parts of Europe, it is your base, it's your hand wash basin in a bottle, your hand sanitizer. You know, you will go to local markets, you go to shops, you will be paying money, touching that money and paying it, that money is not very clean. Your hand sanitizer will be your saving grace if you're going on a trek up some hills somewhere or some, you know, nature reserve, wherever. Your hand sanitizer will be your saving grace when you're going to eat something. You just need to rub some in your hands uh, and before you touch your eyes, before you touch your lips, any of those delicate places you're going to touch, use your hand sanitizer. You need to pack it. It's usually also something you can put in your hand luggage. It's usually under 100 mils, so no excuses. Take some that hand sanitizer. You can also use it to wipe down your airplane before you see it if you have allergies and things like that. So if you're in the cities, it's dusty, local markets, hand sanitizer. Take it. Zip lock bags. If you don't know what I'm talking about, zip lock bags, just go Google it or go to Amazon. Zip lock bags are going to be your saving grace for carrying your food items, carrying your delicates, your electronics, uh, protecting them from uh, moisture and from getting wet in case you have some you have your bottle of water or, or whatever you're carrying with you your your electronics and your documents need to be in a ziploc bag to protect them from any kind of spillages and uh, here's the thing when you put your your food items in a ziploc bag you're also locking in the freshness and you're also stopping any further germs from getting in so you need to carry these baggers around with you you will also avoid unwanted guests in your foods like ants you know in africa we're talking about africa ants they'll find your food if you do not wrap it properly so have some ziploc bags with you they're also great for going through airport security you can throw in all your liquid gels and lipsticks and things and you lock it in one nice little bag and you're good to go so they are very essential for your travel needs it doesn't matter whether you're going to africa asia europe america wherever it is great to have them ziploc bags is somebody with me say yes i am if you're on here thank you toby thank you toby the next item is earplugs now I grew up in Africa and noise is, is normal. To me, noise is normal. I don't mind. I don't mind honking. I don't mind any of those. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Shazia. Welcome to this podcast. So noise is okay for me. But if you're a tourist and you head to Africa or even Asia and you've never been, the noise will be like, your ears will be like, oh my God, you'll have a headache. People honk for any reason. They honk to alert a friend. Hey, I'm here. Hello. They honk to tell somebody, get out of my way. I'm coming. They honk for whatever reason. They honk when they are upset by another driver overtaking them. They'll honk just to tell people, hey, ta especially taxis. Thank you, Toby. If you're in Uganda, taxis honk like no man's business. You can, it's like, a, like, an, an, like an opera that noisy people scream and shout at each other for just chatting border border guys i don't know if you know border border by the way that word just made it into the english oxford dictionary border border <laughs> we are cool uganda we are cool so don't be surprised to see a driver on the wrong side of the road honking at you to get out of their way it could give you a heart attack if you have earbuds though you might not hear them so this might not be this might be dangerous but to be honest you need those things to protect your ears 
if you are not used to the noise in Africa. It will also protect your head. You'll get a headache. So grab a pair before you disembark off your flight. They normally give them out. Well, they used to give these things out. They are not free anymore. I don't know what's happening to the air industry these days. It's like just sitting on a bus in the air. Because when you get on a bus, they don't give you nothing. You're on. You have to carry everything you need. Uh, these days, you get on a flight, you're in a bus in the air. Hey, don't worry. Just take your own. Get them on Amazon. Free. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, taxis and border borders in Uganda. Noise galore. Hey, welcome, Richard. Number, where are we? Number seven? Number eight? I don't even know which number I am. But hey, a torch, a flashlight, an LED light. You can even have, get a headlamp if you're going on a safari, adventure, whatever. You need a torch. I'll tell you what. A few years back in Uganda, there used to be a huge electrical shortage. It used to be called load shedding. I don't know where you're from, where I come from in Uganda. Load shedding was normal. Load shedding is literally electric shortage, electricity shortage. If you don't have a flashlight, you could be stuck in a dark place, especially if you go out in the rural areas. There is no light there. There is no lecky there. There is no lecky as we Brits call it. You will need your flashlight to see. So it is important to carry one in your luggage. You can put it in your checked baggage and then you, when you arrive at your destination, you make sure it's with you in your rucksack or your backpack all the time. Don't leave it behind. In many African countries, the hotels and hostels, especially out of the main cities, may not have enough bright light and you need extra light. Your flashlight will be your savior. Sometimes they have, they have shortages in those hostels, as in electrical shortages, and they don't have. Before they get that, that generator up and cracking, you're in the dark. Your flashlight, again, will be your savior. Now, sometimes these days, uh, our androids have a flashlight on them. But it's not bright enough to give you the light you need. Some are very bright, to be honest. So make sure you've got one of those. If you don't take a flashlight, at least make sure that your Android phone, your smartphone is charged and will be your light when you need it. Also, while walking on roads during the night, you might find that your flashlight is your source of light to avoid any creepy crawlies getting at you in the dark. So, hey, Doreen, how are you doing? So it is a must-have item in your parking when you're parking for your trip to africa don't forget your flashlight a lot of people do forget that now the next item is something i shouldn't be even raising especially if you're a parent especially if you're a mom you need to pack your first aid kit having two children that had eczema when they were little i couldn't go anywhere without my antihistamines i couldn't go anywhere without my uh peptobismol for that loose tummy your charcoal tablets, you name it. I have a walking moving pharmacy with me. I, I, I literally pack the kitchen with me when I'm traveling because I like the natural ingredients. But anyway, I'm joking. First aid kit. If you agree with me, say yes, I agree. There is no need to forget your simple basics. Make sure before you go in any country that whatever medication you're carrying, even if it's an over-the-count, off-the-counter medication in your country, it might not be a welcome medication in your destination you could be called a drug carrier that is not something you want to happen to you so check before you go okay so india has a very hot and humid uh kind of uh, weather in most african countries it's the same so it can be you need to have some of those medicines that are going to help your body adjust they are not normally medicines i'd call them something to just keep your body adjusting to the to the new environment the new foods the new cuisines the new things you have to put into your body so you need to have your first aid kit with you you need to have some some band-aids in case you hurt yourself you know you need to have some eye spray in case you your eyes get you know red eye or dusty those are the things you carry in your, you know, medical uh, first aid kit. I have a full blog post on pkjewelsworld.com on a first aid kit and what to have in that. If you haven't traveled out of your country before, you want to go read that blog post. I can leave the link above this video if you want so that you have the resources you need when you're traveling or when you're taking your first flight, your first trip outside into Africa. So some places, the other reason why you should have a first aid kit in Africa, some places don't have a doctor in the very near vicinity the health facility is miles away and you are in dire pain if you don't have anything with you that could help alleviate the pain or, or stop the bleed or things like that you could be in pain for hours before you get to a doctor and if you don't have some mula with you 
it is cash on delivery in Africa. I mean, they will not touch you until you pay. So pay as you go. So make sure you carry some of your cash with you in your travel pouch. You know, the one we talked about before. So that you can get attended to when you have a medical emergency. Once you get to the clinic or medical facility. So take your first aid with you. It is essential. Insect repellent. Oh my God, we're talking about Africa. The beautiful continent. Lots of insects. It's natural. We love Africa. There are insects galore. Especially mosquitoes. Those mozzies, they'll bite you to kingdom come. I got bitten. You can't believe it. I think they like people who are light-skinned. I'm not that light-skinned, but you know, they love me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, emergency, emergency, emergency. Thank you, Hanifa. It is important to carry your medical kit with you. Insect repellent, malaria is a very widespread disease in Africa, Asia, many parts of Asia as well, and some parts of Europe as well, uh, those that are quite hot. So if you are traveling in the rainy season in Africa, you really must take your medical, your, your insect repellent. Now, you might not know when is the rain season. If you go read my blog post on Visit Why I Love Uganda, I gave you the different seasons in Uganda, if you're going to Uganda. Now, Uganda is East Africa, and literally they have about the same climate. So, some common diseases are related to mosquito bites. Uh, they are, some common diseases are related to insect bites, Lyme disease, malaria. Take your insect repellent. It does not weigh much. It's a little spray bottle. You can buy it from your tropical. Here we buy it from the School of Tropical Medicine. We are blessed to have one right here in Liverpool. So, you spray on your exposed part of your skin and mozzies will not bite you. And most other insects won't either. The other, the other trick I do eh, before I go to Africa, two weeks before I go, I eat lots of garlic. Yeah, I know garlic breath, but I have a little trick for garlic breath. It's called fennel seeds. So two weeks before you go to Africa, Uganda, wherever, eat lots of raw natural garlic. It is very hot. Don't eat it raw. Uh, have, you know, put it in a bit of hot water, smash it, eat it in your food, eat lots of it. Moses hate the stuff. When you go there, you'll be smelling garlic, so they won't be touching you. And uh, take some of those garlic tablets. You know, you can buy them in any supermarket or any drugstore. Take some with you. Say, hey, Evelyn, how are you doing? Hey, Sophie. So, padlocks. Yes, we're going to Africa. We talked about pickpockets before. Again, you know, cost of living, in incomes are very low. So, people have nifty fingers in some places. And please don't get me wrong. Not everybody has long fingers. But you find some places with long fingers where people have long fingers. So, have a padlock and lock your stuff up. Lock your suitcases before you go out. Don't let the home help be tempted with your stuff that you came from Europe with. So have some padlocks with you. Uh, if you're taking the train, you're taking the bus, you even when you're on a flight, I kid you not, Kenya Airways, and I'm not having a go about on Kenyans, you leave your suitcase open and you travel on Kenya Airways, you'll find your goodies gone. So lock up your goodies, have padlocks with you when you travel. They are an essential part of your protecting your luggage it's this basic security really so take padlocks with you i won't go on on that sunscreen lotion now i grew up in africa and i never used to get sunburned then i came to europe and i started getting sunburned what is that all about then i was told the sun in europe is different from the sun in africa i kid you not i got sunburned to a crisp in turkey we came home and we looked like we had just come off a flight from sudan i kid you not so Take your sun cream with you. It is essential that you lather the stuff on. You know, it, sometimes it's sticky, but hey, the, the, the alternative is get sunburned and then you peel. Literally, your skin peels and you look, it's not a good look. Let's take it, take it from me. It's not a good look. So take your sun cream or sunscreen. Africa is very hot. Asia is very hot. South America is very, is very hot. So take your sun cream with you. And keep adding some more. There are some days, sometimes, some hours in the day when you should just be in a shed. And the hours between noon and four are very hot. Try and be in a shed and drink loads. You know, keep hydrated. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Flip flops. Let's talk about flip flops. Thank you, Sophie. Now, in Africa, it is dusty. It is hot. For the same reason, because it's hot, you don't want to be wearing closed shoes. Your feet will sweat. Your, 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 your shoes will smell. 
because you're gonna sweat seriously so have some sandals or flip-flops comfortable get some from sketchers or whatever go to your local uh, well, go buy some sandals that are comfy to walk in not all flip-flops or sandals are comfy to walk in some are really hard and really give your feet some serious pain and blisters so get the right pair uh, so you don't want your your feet to stink and you don't want to get a fungus because of the heat I'm saying this because these are things that I've gone through as a mother. I've had my son's feet get fungal infections. I think he's going to kill me if he watches this video. But flip flops are comfortable. They are easy to walk around with, especially when you're roaming. They are, they are easy to carry. They are stylish. And uh, you can throw them away if they get rotten. So, yeah, get a pair. And uh, you can get some from Amazon. Or you can buy some in an African market. They are very easy to find. Uh, they, they, they call them sapatu in Uganda or sandals and so uh, umoja. <laughs> so go buy some from a market and just wear them. And when you're coming home, just leave them there if you don't want to. Personal water filter is the next item. I talked about hydrating. Do not. And earlier on I talked about cholera and I was joking that it's an insect bone. It is not. It is a waterborne disease. Typhoid. Typhoid is a waterborne disease. Just holiday stomach usually comes from drinking uh, the wrong water or eating fruits and veg washed in the wrong waters. So you need to have your own water filter. Now they are not expensive. They are bottles that come with a water filter as well. I have one over there in my kitchen. Now, always buy bottled water. But that does not mean that bottled water is actually clean enough. Seriously. So have your bottle with your water filter. Empty your water into that filter bottle and you will be surprised what you get out of that. So you can fill up your, water your filtered water bottle from an, an open water source. And that filter will filter out the mud, the dirt, the germs. And, and, and you will get some purified water to drink. You will need to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. When you're in Africa, it is hot, it dehydrates you, you do not want to get sunstroke or dehydration. So have your water filter. They are not expensive uh, when you buy them from a supermarket, so go buy some. Now, the next one is a very, very controversial one and it's also an interesting one. You know, men can, can stand anywhere, in any place, well, well. Apart from offending other people, they may be breaking the law, but men can pee anywhere. We women, we have to go to, to lengths to have a pee in places that don't have public washrooms or conveniences. Now, this item I'm sharing with you, it's literally something that I, <laughs> it's so funny. But it's a female urination device. Yeah, I wish I could show you what it looks like. It's a female urination device that allows you to pee while standing as a woman. If you are going on a trek, on a safari, you're, you're going on a long ramble, if you're going on uh, as a rambler here in Europe, women use them as ramblers. You just stand and be like a man. <laughs> Do it like a man. So <laughs> you will find less public toilets and even... If you happen to find them in Africa, they can be disgustingly filthy, smelly and dirty. And I'm not, I grew up in Africa and I love Africa and I'm telling you, this is the truth. So, although men have no problem, women do have a problem peeing in public. And, you know, you will be the shock of the, if you're seen doing it. But if you have this urination device, you can be like a man and get on with it. So, <laughs> you know. So you can't, allow to, to, you can't afford to lose your dignity, but sometimes dignity has to be put aside in order to help yourself. You don't use it. Don't use it in the cities or overcrowded places. But when you're out there in the rural areas and you don't want to squat because you might get bitten by those bugs I talked about, you might want to use this device. Okay, toilet paper. This is in, connected to the one before. I always take a roll of toilet paper. I just take out the middle, you know, the, 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 the thing that holds it together in the middle, the heart of it, so that I can flatten it and I go with a roll of paper. If not, I make sure I get a ton of ha uh, hand towels to carry with me, as in, uh, you know, like hand towels, you know, serviettes, let me call them serviettes. So, you, in the, the same way, when you're out there, in the rural areas or even in the public cities some public conveniences don't have toilet rolls so you definitely need hey princess welcome you need to have your tissue with you or you might go do number two and you have nothing to clean yourself with it is not comfortable so take your toilet roll with you 
you're going to Africa, so get some. <laughs> they, they, they are there in the supermarkets. Take your toilet, no, don't take your toilet, toilet roll from Europe or wherever else you're coming from. But when you get there, buy some and have it with you in your rucksack or backpack. All the time, it is. It will save you. It will save the day, the day. So, and when you go to India, this is something we learned. Many Indians, <laughs> they still don't use toilet paper. So, if you go to India, some of those places, Asia, India, they won't have any for you. So you might have a problem. So go with some. Right. That's it. Those are the things you need to take with you. Everything else you can carry are uh, chapsticks. Um, uh, you need a comb, you need some cream to keep you, uh, apart from sun cream, you need your cream, uh, you need your underwears, a change of underwear in case you're stuck somewhere, at least you, you have something to change. In addition to hand sanitizers, you should definitely carry with you a pack of wet wipes. Uh, they shouldn't have any 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 perfume in them because you just want to have a wet wipe with you. You can have a pack of wet wipes and you can have a pack of uh, antibacterial wipes as well. Uh, either way, have some with you because they might end up being your bath. <laughs> so that's it from me today. I hope I've given you some ideas on what to carry with you when you are out in Africa, in your trip to Africa, enjoy your trip. If you want to learn how to get amazing deals on trips to Africa and your girl, hit me up in the inbox or just head on to pkjewelswell.com forward slash fan and check out what we offer. I'm not a travel agent, by the way, I'm putting it out there because I get a lot of people telling me I want to book a trip to wherever. Will you please tell me the details? I'm not a travel agent. I am part of a global travel community, a travel club, and we get amazing deals on vacations on on cruises on flights we get a, a, a price guarantee that if the price is cheaper elsewhere we can go for free 100 percent uh we get price guarantees that if a flight drops the price before we travel we get the difference between what we paid and the price drop back no questions asked and several other benefits uh, of being members that's why we're part of that and uh, uh, we haven't bought our travels from travel agents for years because we get a great deal and i believe if you're one of those people that knows a good deal when you see it it's a beautiful product to have as part of your lifestyle so hit me up and i can give you some details other than that follow me if you're here and you haven't followed me before you haven't sent me a friend request do the needful uh find me on all the socials julie silk Alunji is my name head on to pk jewels world forward slash blog and check out what i tell you about sh uh, travel get your travel and get your wanderlust on arise and shine to your awesome destiny you know you want to if you're on youtube subscribe 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 so you don't miss an update every week on monday i post a new video that tells you about amazing things that may be good for you thank you for watching thank you for being with me 